So tap research, Aaron Plashen. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Eugene. And uh, my company and co-founder, Akhtar, here in the front row, uh, our company is called Tap Research. Um, so for this presentation, we're going to ask Eugene to have his earmuffs on, uh, coming from Serving Donkey. Um, I'm just kidding. He actually invited us to be here. Um, it's fine. We share. Um, so Tap Research is a mobile market research platform. So we are helping people create short surveys, distribute them to the target audience that they care about, and analyze their results, export them for further analysis. So everyone here is probably familiar with the idea that, and I can tell, uh, things are going mobile. Like half the room is looking at a mobile phone, literally, right now. Uh, and, and while people are spending more time on their mobile devices, the market research industry has, has not really found any new innovative way of reaching more people. There's always the challenge in market research of how do I research the right people. I can use amazing tools like SurveyMonkey to create surveys of lots of different formats and send them out to my customer list or another database that I use. Um, and some tools that allow you to tap into a market research panel uh, that will allow you to say, I want to talk to this age, this gender, people in this location, people who happen to be in the market for a car, whatever the criteria are for your particular research project. Uh, and we had an interesting idea combining kind of the mobile app ecosystem with market research in order to put surveys in front of people uh, in a way that allows us to distribute surveys to a far broader uh, set of people. Uh, today, we're, we're able to send surveys to 70 million people in the US alone, uh, and international will come later. So how do you do that? Uh, the way that we did that is to work with mobile app developers themselves. Uh, and instead of just relying on traditional panel methodologies, where you go out and either donate to charity or compensate respondents for completing market research, we found a way to put the surveys kind of in line with activities that people are doing in everyday life. So as you use mobile apps, and that is it, kind of the dominant use case on smartphones, even blowing browser-based usage out of the water. We are integrated so that when people are using a messaging app or a game or a navigation app, a whole bunch of different types of apps, that when there's a moment when the app publisher wants to monetize that application and ask you to unlock some premium content or, 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 or earn more rewards of whatever ilk they are in that particular app, we give them an alternative instead of only saying, "Do you want to charge? Do you want to pay real money?" Uh, which very few people do. It's like a three or four percent kind of average conversion rate of people who actually pay the money to, to get the premium content. Um, we allow them to fill out a survey instead, and we share revenue with the publisher of that app. So we are really focused on survey distribution and how do we make it so that everyone is a survey respondent who doesn't mind sharing their opinion in exchange for some reward that makes sense in the moment um, versus kind of the traditional methodologies. I thought that it would make sense for us, because this is a demo event, to actually do a real live survey right now. This is a little different than how our platform typically works, where we're actually distributing these through apps. But let's pretend you guys were all using your app and you're opting into uh, take a survey in exchange for some coins in your favorite mobile game. And uh, so I built a survey specifically for this event tonight. Um, so I'm going to log in real quick to my personal account. And we can see I've already taken the survey. I kind of cheated, uh, as did Akhtar. Um, so we have two responses already on this survey, which is phenomenal. Uh, but now we are going to see if everyone can pull out their phone and open their browser. Uh, I'm going to break the rules and show a slide, because I'm not sure how else to actually put this on the screen. Um, and go to this bit.ly URL, please, if you have a browser. As many of, as many of you as possible. We're, this, we're trying to get 200 responses. I'm not sure we have 200 people here. Uh, I don't have a QR code that we could have done that. Uh, but if you look down, I can read it to you. <laughs> we 
When you have the page loaded, maybe raise your hand so we can get a sense of how many people have done it. Keep it raised. It should work. should be pretty quick. The survey is only a few questions, not subjecting you to anything cruel and unusual. Capitalization shouldn't matter, right? Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, Aaron, we're nearing your five-minute mark, so maybe... <laughs> All right. How many people have been able to access the URL, complete the survey? Cool. Okay. Did you put in, I think it's case-sensitive. But let's refresh and see what responses we're getting. Oh, only two so far. All right, maybe, maybe we can do some Q&A, and then you'll refresh we'll it then. Yeah, in parallel. Yeah. So, so, any questions for the crowd? How many people did it? Oh, well, I, I just checked it was at four. We'll check back in <laughs> at the tail end of the Q&A session, I think. Anyone else? Yeah. So, with all these apps that you're integrating with, do you have to do the uh, business development? Please repeat the question. Advance? Oh, yeah. Do, really uh, do we have to do the, the business development with the, app, with the apps to serve the surveys? Uh, yes, in effect, we have to go out and they integrate an SDK from us that calls the surveys back from our from our side. Um, but we also are going through some of the, uh, in order to get scale initially, through some of the kind of offer providers that are advertising providers to large uh, ecosystems of apps. So by going through those, we get reached to about 50,000 different applications now, uh, and we'll build our own developer network in parallel with that. Because you need big volume in order to provide a reasonable research. Yeah? You mentioned games. Is this only for games or is it for other applications? And if it is, what applications or what type of applications? Uh, no, it's not only games. It's, it's basically freemium applications where they're trying to monetize at some point in the app. So there are messaging apps and navigation apps and things outside of the gaming realm. Yes? What's your. Um, you mentioned the low conversion rates for people paying real money. What's your conversion rate look like? Uh, the conversion rate, it's we've kept, we've kept. So the question is, what is our conversion rate uh, on people taking the surveys? And the conversion rate is remarkably high, partly due to the kind of incentive mechanism, and partly because we constrain what types of surveys can be created and sent through the system. So we sh we limit it to ten question surveys. Uh, and so the conversion rate from somebody who has completed the first question to completing the last question. That's not what I'm asking. The choice of completing a questionnaire versus paying money to uh, buy the premium. Yeah, so it's basically about the 3 to 4% for the, for the paying money. And we see somewhere in the kind of 60 to 90, depending on the implementation. How do you let people know that they can really trust you and you're not putting some sort of malware in their computer or you're not going to get to a page that's going to eventually spam you to death with you know, 20 million emails. So um, how do I know that I'm actually not in one of those? Repeat the question. How do people know that we are not spyware or, or a spam site? Which is 99% um, of the surveys. We don't ever see yeah, well, well, we don't ask for any personal identifying information. So people are usually, it hasn't come up, or it's not a piece of feedback that we've received, that's a big concern. So you're going to be reaching out to the public soon? For, for, your, I'm not for understanding. your surveys? You're trying to make this broad scope? Yeah, we're, uh, we're distributing them nationwide now. Okay, so how do you assure me that I'm not, like, what, what are you doing to assure your, your user or your, your customer or your whatever, the survey responder that mm -hmm. you're not those things? Could you repeat the question for the people in the back? Yeah, uh, it's the same question. How you know, how do we ensure? Actually, do you want to? So, uh, I think that. Yeah. So, so in our surveys, we never ask a PII personal information question, uh, and secondly, we are embedded into a app developer's app, and so our powers of actually extracting information from your device are very very limited. The developers are very concerned 
that we should not be putting anything in the apps that causes credibility loss of their app. So there's a gating factor in our actually accessing any device. The developer is very, very concerned. They want to make sure that our app doesn't do anything like that. So it's sort of a built-in mechanism. You're going to need to assure them. Survey we probably should say that more up front, but, uh, but yeah, we, we are sort of gated that way. So let's refresh the bit.ly and uh, end it with that. All right, so we got 17 responses. Um, and let's see. Sorry? Survey doesn't seem to advance at least on my job there. Huh, I'll check it out afterward. Um, huh, maybe it's capitalization? No? No, you get to the survey, but just get slung. Huh, strange. Well, um, Aaron, you'll stick around after the presentations I'll, and I'll answer like, any questions, I'm right? I'm interested in taking a look, yeah. Um, okay, cool. Thank you, and we'll, we'll be around yeah. to chat afterward. Okay. All right, let's give it up for Stafford Church. Thanks, guys.